talk about folk tales. I love tell stories. I love old stories. Folk tales, when I think of folk tales, I'm thinking of stories that are 100 years old, 200 years old, centuries old. There are all kinds of different folk tales. Now, last night I asked you to think of some of your favorite folk tales, and we'll talk about those as we go on. But today I'm going to tell you how to tell a folk tale. Now, there's a number of reasons you may want to tell a folk tale. You may want to tell a folk tale to nieces, nephews, children of your own. You may want to incorporate it into a lesson, connecting it to the culture that you're teaching. So, I'm going to tell, teach you how to tell a folk tale, and you won't even have to memorize it. First step is choosing a folk tale. Now, I collect folk tales. I've got maybe 50 books filled with folk tales. Brought a few of those here today. And I'll flip through these and I'll look for what good folk tale would apply to the situation I'm speaking for. First of all, a story should interest your listener almost as much as it interests you. So you need to be enthused about it, but you need to have something that ties to your listener. It could be something that ties in with their age. A story about a little girl, you could tell to a little girl. A story about Germany, you could tell to a class that you're teaching things about Germany. Think about time, too. General rule of thumb I do is one minute per page. It's going to be at least one minute per page once you get into telling the story. Sometimes it can be a little bit more, but you know you can't go less than that because it packs on details. So, choosing our folk tales. What, what folk tales did you guys think of when I asked you what was your favorite folk tale? I said Cinderella, if that counts. Cinderella counts. There, there are lots of different Birds. versions of Cinderella, yeah. too. It's very interesting. Yeah, Daniel. Um, I like Hansel and Bell. Hansel and Bell, that's a good one. Yeah. My mom used to tell me, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a German folk tale about this like goblin underneath the bridge that you had to pay this toll to. It's, uh -huh. it's right. very vivid. It's a good one. Yeah, that, and that, that's a good one too because um, a lot of these folk tales you'll find translate into everyday vernacular. You know, people will mention the, 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 the bridge troll. Yeah. And, you know, well, if you haven't heard the folk tale, you're not going to know what they're talking about. Tyler, did you have a. Um. It's an Irish folk tale of, uh, about like Red Branch and Kukulin, I think. <laughs> He's like a, a guy who's also half town. Wow. It's a cool story. It's <laughs> called Red Branch? Yeah, it's like an old, it's like kind of a, like the old Irish myths about the creation of Ireland. Uh -huh. So this was like the army that helped establish it. Excellent. Don't go that one. Uh, yeah, really. Um, I like the Japanese folk tale of the Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a little bit that one, too. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I was just wondering, is it the three billy goats crap that you're thinking of? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got some folk tales in mind. And I didn't want you to necessarily bring in the folk tale. I wanted it to be a folk tale that you know. Because what we're going to do next is prepare for the folk tale and the next step is to break the story into its critical elements. And because this is something that was a favorite of yours, this will be easier for you. If I'm looking through, and say I've, I've picked one and maybe I'm not familiar with it yet, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to break the story into what is the basic story elements, the things that the story cannot do without. Because there are some parts <coughs> The story won't stand on its own with it. Some parts can change, and the parts that can change are the things that you are going to change. You're going to make it your own. You're going to add details that make it the storyteller's story, and not necessarily just the story that you read from the book. Because even if you have a German folktale, there's several different versions of that German folktale, told in German, depending on what the village is coming from, and that sort of thing. So, Attention to exact detail is not essential. For example, here, what folk tale is this? Three little pigs. pigs. Three little pigs, that's right. Now, what do we have? What are some essential elements we have? Three, three, three pigs. pigs. So we have three pigs. We have a wolf. The crown of thorns. 
houses. 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 And we have houses. We have three houses. Three pigs. And we can even break this down into a further abstraction. Do these need to be pigs? No. Could these be mice and this be a cat? Yes. That would work just the same way. So as long as you recognize these elements and keep that as a story structure in your head, you won't have any problem telling this as a story. The second step is to rehearse this five times. Now five times doesn't sound like a lot, but you don't want to over rehearse it. You don't want to memorize it. Memorize it will sound, sound camp. It will be just one step away from reading a story to someone. And that's not what storytelling is. First you read the story. Become familiar with it. Next, you tell the story aloud. And then you have the book down in front of you, and you're peeking now. Uh, did the castle come first, or did it go into the cave? Right? Oh, when? And then you continue. Next time, you tell the story aloud without the book, and you're never going to feel ready for this. You're going to put the book aside, and you're going to try and tell the story completely from memory. And you'll stumble, and you'll forget things, but work on getting it seeded into your brain. Fourth time you tell the story, you're practicing. This time you're changing the wording. Sometimes the way it's written in the book isn't the best delivery. It's going to sound a little bit awkward. Maybe it says, he, shed, he said this, she said that. Maybe you want to turn that into a narration that you know, they, they talked about this, they did that, that sort of thing. The fifth time through, you've got a pretty good handle on it at this point. You know what the story is. You know how you want to say it. And this time you're going to add movement. You're going to add gestures. You're going to move your hands. You're going to run across the room. You're, you're going to like light up your face at certain points in the story. And maybe you even want to try tackling voices. Voices are difficult because you have to keep track of who sounds like what. <laughs> Once you come to telling the story, this is the most essential element of storytelling. Storytelling is centuries old oral tradition. It's having a direct connection with your audience. You're at least making eye contact. Maybe you're throwing in someone's name or referring to something that they saw earlier in the day. That brings it home. That brings it directly into them because it's a sharing of the story. It's not a telling. Have a mutual relationship with the audience, visually engaged with your listener. And many stories are better with a brief introduction. You may start off by saying, This is an old story from Ireland. And I want to tell it to you because I have some Irish in my blood, and my grandfather came from such and such. And maybe you put a little, little header on it like that, and then you go into the story. That is storytelling. So happy storytelling. Now, put this up there because campfires are a great place to tell stories. <laughs> a lot of fun memories in Boy Scouts of the Scoutmaster telling stories. It could be ghost stories, it could be old Indian tales. Does anybody have any ideas of who they might tell a story to? I mean, it really, I mean, if I send you home tonight, it would be something that I want you guys to tell a story. Who mm -hmm. might you tell a story to? Yeah. Children. Children? Yeah. Do you know children? I know some children. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> friends and family, yeah. My friends. Friends, yeah. Friends are good. Um, you can tell it at, at, at a bar. Anywhere you can get <laughs> five minutes of five minutes of their attention. And you can tell a story. And once you get into it and once you're actually performing it. You'll be surprised. You'll engage them. You'll notice that suddenly it's silent and everybody's eyes are on you. It's really, really rewarding. So that's your assignment. Go home tonight, chunk up the story, break it into the central elements, and when you tell the story, it's something you know. Thank you.